Shalom, Shalom. This is the brother Daniel. I welcome back again with another lesson. Giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahawashai, Bahashim Racha Hakodash. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And shalom to the hopeful Lord. And as you can see here on the screen, you know, this is a picture that I took, you know, while I was on my way home of the moon, you know. Well, the moon is a quarter of the way full. You know, we're about a quarter of the way through the month. According to the moon, you know, when the moon is full, we'll be halfway through. There's about 14, you know, about 14 days. And as you can see, it has a orange tint to it. You know, the picture didn't really come out correctly, but this is actually very red. Okay, the moon is a different shade and color. Okay, and I took a picture of it today, but yesterday I saw the same thing. The moon was red. Okay, that little slither. So this is two days in a row, and you know, when we see these things in the in in the skies, man, we know that we are in the end times. These different signs in the heavens, right? Because the scriptures talk about this, man. Not only do we, you know, see the chariots in the heavens, you know, uh, you know, different um, things uh, are flying through the sky. Okay, whether they be chariots or say uh, uh, comets or asteroids or whatever, right? But we see these different things in the scriptures. The scriptures talk about them to let us know what that we are. This is the time before the great and terrible day of the Lord. So let's get some precepts, right? So let's go here. This is Acts chapter 2, and verse 19. It says, And I will shew wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke okay so he's showing wonders in the heavens above right the chariots okay uh, solar eclipses lunar eclipses man right and then you know different things going on the earth you have you know, different places that are being set on fire earthquakes man Okay, different um, uh, uh, abnormal occurrences in nature. Okay, and that's all happening right before, you know, the Lord is about to bring his grand judgment. It says, the sun shall be turned into darkness. That's a solar eclipse. And we've been seeing a lot of uh, solar eclipses, okay, in the past couple of years. And the moon into blood. And that's what we see here. The moon being turned into blood. That red color, man. It says, Before the great and notable day of the Lord come. So the day that's coming is great and is notable, man. Meaning you are going to remember this. Okay, the Lord is going to bring grand judgment. It says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right? So you have to know his name. Which is the, his name, the Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, and the Son's name is Yahweh Shai. So you can't be saved without knowing them names. Okay? But we are in the time where the Lord is about to visit this earth, man. And he's showing these different signs. Not only in the heavens, but different prophecies also. So... Um, let's grab this real quick. We're going to go to 2nd Ezra chapter 9. Um, 2nd Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1. We're going to go uh, down to 4, okay, just to get the points. 2nd uh, Ezra 9 and 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself so 
how do we measure the time? By the prophecy. We can tell how close we are, how close the Lord is to returning and uh, delivering the, the heavy judgment of the Heavenly Father by the prophecies. The biggest major prophecy we are looking for is what the mandation of this karagma, this digital all, and um, because after that everything is going to speed up quickly, man. All right, then deliverance will be right around the corner after that hour of great temptation. It says, it says, measured out of time diligently in itself. So when we measure, we have to watch, you know. We, we are the watchmen, you know, we watch the news, we uh, look at different articles, we look at different things around us to see what prophecies are being fulfilled, man. Because once uh, particular prophecies are fulfilled, then we know that the great day of the Lord is coming. And when thou seest part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made okay so when we see part of these prophecies all right in these different signs pass we know that the Lord is about to visit the world which he made all right part of those signs is what the signs in the heavens the blood moon right so we know that something major is coming when you see these different signs you know that's how the tribe of Issachar was used they had that gift of understanding and prophesying by understanding the stars whether they would win a war or not okay to basically tell what was gonna happen on the earth man and that is also too a part of you know knowledge of the tree of life which the tree of life essentially is what these scriptures but what also comes with that is the knowledge of understanding those different you know uh, stars which we'll get that back in the kingdom so it says, and thou, uh, uh, verse 3, therefore then, then, therefore when there shall be earthquakes and uproars of the people, which is all part of prophecy, we got uproars, we got earthquakes increasing, uh, 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 you know, drastically, high level earthquakes all around the world. So we know this is the time of the end. Then shalt thou well understand, and we do through the spirit of empower of Yahweh Shem Shai. Okay, primarily, you know, great millstone, those who also teach the same doctrine, that the most high speck of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. So the most high speck of these things before they came to pass, right? The Lord gave us his game plan or, or his, his plan, his perfect plan of what he's going to do, man. So we are seeing this. So, with this in mind, seeing these different signs, okay, um, so like before I get to that, let's go to this right here. This is Genesis 1 and 14. If you ever wondered, uh, you know, what the sun, the moon, and the stars are for, this is what it's for. This is Genesis 1 and 14. And the Most High said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven. To divide the day from the night and let and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. Right? So the lights that divide the day from the night, the sun for the day, and the lesser light, which is the moon for the night. Okay, stars in the firmament. Okay? These are the different things that are used. So with the sun and the moon, they tell you what you know it says, let them be for signs. The sign of the end for seasons, the the uh, you know, the season of um, you know, of great tribulation and destruction, and for days and for years, and then you use them also what to measure time, the sun you use to measure days, and the moon you use to measure months. Okay, so that's what they're for. So when we see these things in the heavens, we know that the Lord is near. Okay. So, with that being said, I want to read this again and we're going to get another scripture. It says, um, uh, verse 20 again. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. 
Now, we have these Christians that say, oh, I can't, you know, wait for the day of the Lord, right? But do you know what's coming in the day of the Lord? It's not going to be glorious for everyone. The elect will rejoice. They will still be afraid, but they will rejoice, you know, like the scripture says, uh, rejoice with trembling, trembling at the power of Yahweh Shem Shai. But the elect will rejoice nonetheless. But the rest of the people are going to be terrified. You know, the scriptures talk about what? That the Lord Yahweh Shai, you know, when he would see when he shall be seen in the heavens, uh, all the tribes of the earth are going to tremble. They're going to mourn. Because he's coming back to judge and make war. So let's get it. Um, this is Amos chapter 5, verse 20. We're going to see if we get a couple more verses out of here. So lock you. Uh, verse 18 it says woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord so woe unto those who desire the day of the Lord now <laughs> is this talking about the elect is it destruction unto them no those who draw nigh unto the Lord with their mouth but their heart is far from him you so called Christians who, who, who you know who say uh, uh you know, you're, you're desiring to see the day of the Lord, but you have no understanding of what's going on. Neither do you do the things that are pleasing unto the Lord, okay, by following the scriptures. All right, you say that the law is done away with, but the law has dominion over man while he lives, as the scriptures say. Uh, verse 18 again, Woe unto, the, unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? What end is it going to be for those who... Uh, uh, are hypocrites man you pretend okay you pretend to love the most high you pretend to uh, you know be all you know be holy and to do the things that are pleasing unto the Lord okay and especially those who are teaching you know there are people that they're Israelites but are not doing it uh, in sincerity and in truth, but for filthy lucre's sake. You know, you may say that you desire the day of the Lord, but you got a lot of camps that, 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 that aren't desiring it. Okay? But those who do say that, to what end is it for you, man? Woe unto you. Because you're not doing this in sincerity. So that's who that's for, man. But the elect are going to be saved no matter what and they're going to be sincere about this truth okay it says to what end is it for you the day of the Lord is darkness and not light as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on, on the wall and a serpent bit him so uh, tribulation after tribulation peril after peril that's how the day of the Lord is going to be right it says shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light even very dark and no brightness in it so it's going to be gloomy man you know it's going to be gloomy it's going to you could imagine when the Lord enters the atmosphere he, he could change the whole atmosphere of the earth to be very terrifying man for his great judgment right so we know the great and terrible day of the Lord is coming man so we want to repent and be prepared and prepare prepare ourselves us who are, you know you, you so called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans okay you have to turn from your ways and turn back unto your power Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai okay Yahweh the Heavenly Father and Yahweh Shai the Messiah whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We have to turn back. At least he destroy you with a great destruction, man. Zephaniah 2 and 2. Um, we're going to get 2 and 1. 
This is Zephaniah 2 and 1. Gather yourself together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desire. Right? So, you know, the Israelites are the, the, the nation that are not desired. Okay? Gather yourselves together. Okay, assemble. It says, uh, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. So come together. All right, repent. Seek after the Lord before he brings the decree. Now, where is the decree coming from? The Heavenly Father. So when the decree comes from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, guess who's going to be executing it? The Lord, Yahweh Shai, you know, uh, Michael, the archangel, and the angels on down, man. They're going to be executing that decree. And it's going to be a, a very grand one. Like we read, uh, the great and notable day of the Lord. You're going to remember it. You know, you know how you take notes in class to remember, you know, your thoughts. That's what it means by notable. Something that you could, you remember, man. And of course, also, it's written. Okay. It says, uh, uh, verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. That's the elect. Which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be. Ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Right. So you'll be um, covered and exempt from that judgment, man. Because we're signing and crying for the abominations that be done in the midst of us, right? So that's, that is our hope and our earnest expectation. That we do this work, okay, with all our strength all the way into the end. And the Lord will save us, man. And, and move us out of the way of that destruction, man. Okay, so I just wanted to, you know, do a quick video on that. And uh, Lord willing, you were edified with that. Shalom.